Alrighty, what's going on? Sebastian here from bullishcoder.com and today we are looking at using a code anywhere container locally via SSH on Visual Studio Code. So just to give us a little preview of what the final result is going to look like, it's going to look like like so. So basically what we're looking at here is a essentially my, uh, Visual Studio Code on Windows 10. And you can see here that we are connected to a uh, terminal that's a bash terminal from uh, from the code anywhere container. On the left hand side, we see the workspace. So the files inside of that container inside of our workspace. So we get full SSH access to a code anywhere container. And I'm using it locally on Visual Studio Code on my machine while still having all the resources on the server running. So all the, the domain names, the web output, everything is still on, on, on the server. So I like this setup a lot because it allows me to work first off in Linux instead of using PowerShell or any Microsoft related product because I you know all my servers are basically Linux and that's how I like to work. One great advantage of this over using the code.codeanywhere.com uh, code editor is that you, you know, I'm using it on Visual Studio Code which has 10 million different plugins and uh, you know, uh, IDE style functionalities that allow you, you know, to fill off, uh, fill code, stuff like that. So there, there's a lot of benefits of uh, working this way. And I just enjoy it overall more. So um, I have a pretty powerful PC and I like to take advantage of like my pre-installed plugins for my IDEs and my editors. And I found that this way I can get access to all of that while still maintaining all my code and using all the resources of the servers themselves. Now I'm running the freelancer account on codeanywhere.com. So uh, it gives us, I think up to like 10 unique containers that we can uh, run uh, concurrently uh, on the code anywhere environment, which is pretty great. So I can have 10 different instances of 10 different types of server setups. This is great in case you wanna have a different, uh, if you wanna have like a dev server and a production server, and you want, you know, it's it's great because you can mimic your dev server to match your production server. So it creates a lot of like you know, a professional working environment. So I find that to be very beneficial here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys from beginning to end on how do we get to this. All righty, we're going to go ahead and start here. Uh, so there's some resources that we need to take a look at first. So. Uh, there's two major links that uh, they're going to be required for this. I'm going to go ahead and link them in the description, probably show them on the screen right now. Uh, so what you're going to see is two main links and between these two links, you basically have all the resources that you need to set this up. Uh, however, you know, I found it a little bit troublesome at times and that's why I'm making this video, just make it easy for you and uh, easy to understand. So. Uh, this technically should work on any type of uh, container, but right, you know, I, I tried it on a Node.js container so far, so Node.js Ubuntu instance of a container in Code Anywhere. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and do this demo using a new project container that I, it's a uh, LAMP stack container, so it's in the LAMP stack, but it should work exactly the same. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. All right, to start out, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the uh, Windows documentation here. And we're going to go, uh, once you get to the link, which is in the description or somewhere around here, go ahead and go down to the installation section. So to get started, this is what you'll need. So there's a couple items, one, two, and three. Uh, all three of these are necessary, so they are absolutely required. So first things, uh, open SSH compatible SSH client. So this comes pre-installed in Windows, uh, in Windows 10 at least. So I'm using Windows 10. If you don't have it, you can go ahead, click on that, follow the instructions on how to get it. I already have it installed and it's pretty simple, so I'm not gonna get into that. Number two, you need to install Visual Studio Code. If you don't have it, I already have it. You probably do too, so we're gonna skip that. And then last, and last item on this list is gonna be install the Remote Development Extension Pack. Now this you probably don't have, so this you'll probably need to install. So you can click on that and it's gonna bring up this window right here. And from here you click install, it's gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code. You'll install it. Uh, then I'd probably recommend restarting Visual Studio Code. I don't know if that's actually required, but it you know, probably helps. Uh, 
So at this point, we have the SSH client, we have Visual Studio Code, and we have the Remote Development Extension Pack. Great, okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and jump down to the connect to a remote host. So the first thing that they're asking you to do here is to test the connection using PowerShell. So on number one, this is where we're gonna get a little stuck here and we're gonna, we gotta jump over to the Code Anywhere uh, documentation. So you can't just run this command because it's not gonna work uh, since uh, Co Code Anywhere requires a few extra uh, parameters. So if we go into the FAQ from Code Anywhere, Let's see what it says here. So how can I connect to the SSH of my container, Linux, Linux and OS as OSX. So this is meant for Linux and Mac users basically, but this is extremely simple to uh, replicate for Windows. And I found that these instructions are probably the simplest to get us to where we wanna go. So it says, op number one, open your terminal. Now numbers one, two, three, yeah, one, two, and three, they're, 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 these are local to your Windows machine. So this is low to your local environment. So they're at, so it says open your terminal. So this would be opening up PowerShell. So let me go ahead and open up PowerShell. All right, great, I have PowerShell open here. So then number two, says type in SSH keygen. So this is the same, it's gonna be the same on Windows as it is in Linux and Mac. So all you gotta do is type in the SSH keygen command. So I'm gonna copy that, coming over to PowerShell and once I can get it to copy properly, all right, I'm just gonna type it in SSH dash keygen. You hit enter generating a public private RSA key pair. So this is the, what basically the key gen, the, the generator that you need to create your SSH uh, key. So it's asking you to enter a file in which to save the key and it has a default path. I recommend leaving it to the default path up to you though. You can save it wherever you want. So once you click enter, this is probably gonna tell me that I already have that. So. Yeah, so, oh shoot, I hope I didn't just overwrite that. Oh no. Okay, still connected. So if you already have one, don't overwrite it. You could probably just uh, create, you know, in the same in the same path, just create another one, just give it a different name. Anyway, once you have your key generated, so that's gonna take care of steps one and two. Uh, now we're gonna go to three. So it says go to the actual file, so the public key, so dot pub, and copy your entire key. So this is telling you on your local machine, go ahead and. Uh, open up that that file that that was generated by the key gen. You can that, do that by going to the directory, right clicking on it and opening it up in a notepad. So once you have that key copied, then we go ahead and we go into our code anywhere uh, container. So So right now I'm just go ahead, I'm navigating over to my C drive, to users, to your accounts, and the basically where we save the SSH key. So we could go ahead and right click on this. We're gonna go ahead and open, and we could open it with code. So we're just gonna grab that. So copy it. And now we're gonna go ahead and go into our browser. So here, in my code anywhere container. 
I'm going to right click on the container. I'm going to click on SSH terminal. It's going to open up the SSH terminal for this specific container. Now, like I said before, this is a LAMP stack. It's a little different than the node stack, but it's uh, it should work nonetheless. So let's go ahead and once we open this up, we can go ahead and it tells us that we need to uh, paste the code into the authorized keys uh, in, in the container. So to get the actual file path for that container, what I found works easiest is just to type in ssh-keygen which is basically the same code we were using in powershell and this gives us the uh the default location of the rsa keys so i'm just copying that i'm gonna add i'm i don't want to create another key so do not run that so Control c to like to back out and I, I am doing a CD into the directory. And you can see here that we have the authorized keys, the config, the ID underscore RSA. And so these are exi existing files. The only thing we need to worry about here is authorized keys. So we wanna go ahead and do vim authorized keys, enter. Now you'll see that there's already something in here. So you can go ahead and uh, just do not delete it. Don't do anything with this. All you got to do is shift A. It will take you to the end of the file. Uh, you hit the letter I for insert. Oh, okay. We're already in insert mode. So give it a couple lines. And here we are going to paste our, we are going to paste our new SSH uh, identity file that we created. So we're going to copy that we are going to paste it and at this point we need to just save and quit from vi so to do that hit the escape key colon and it's going to be wq so write and quit okay at this point we have the authorized key set up on this uh con on this container uh i believe let me take a look Okay, so at this point, yeah, we're basically ready to run this. So to test it out, we see that they give us after uh, number eight here, they give us a little command that we could probably copy. So we need to copy this and just let's take a quick look at this command. SSH-P, uh, you know, uh, looking for the port number. So the port number, then uh, it's gonna be Cabox. I'm not sure what why it's always that user, but it doesn't matter. So oh, you just need, basically the only things we need to look at here are port and ID underscore RSA. So port is gonna be given to us by code anywhere. So I'll show you that in a second. And ID RSA, this is talking about the local, the identity file on your local Windows machine. Make sure you keep that in mind. So we can basically go now into our container. If you right click on the container and you click on info, it's gonna say SSH access on this, basically on this, like uh, on this host and, and uh, port number. So we can go ahead and just grab that. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, copy it. Uh, now I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code. Alrighty. So what I want to do is on the bottom left corner, you will see this little, uh, looks like uh, two arrows to, towards each other. I don't know what it's supposed to signify. Anyway, we click on that. And then here we're going to click on uh, connect to host. We are going to head and click add new SSH host. We're going to go ahead and type in SSH. We're going to paste the host from, uh, from code anywhere with the port number. After that, we're going to do dash I, and then we're going to give it the file path to the, uh, SSH identity file that's uh, on our local machine. So for us, that's going to be. dot ssh slash 
ID underscore RSA2. At this point, where we click, at this point, we hit enter. It's going to ask us where we want to save the file. So basically, there's a default one. So just I would just stick with the default on this. You select the default, and then on, on the bottom right, it's going to ask you if you want to connect right away. So you click on connect. Now it's asking you the platform. It's going to be Linux. This is going to be continue. So it's asking the, about the fingerprint. So yeah, we want to continue. And it's saying here that it failed. So let's see if we retry. Okay, so real quick, some issues that I ran into. Okay, so we have the final result here. I connected to successfully. We can see here on the bottom left, SSH, host, 25, at, um, code anywhere. So we have the full system set up at this point. Uh, so some of the things that I ran into that I probably uh, screwed up is when I was generating the, RF, the ID key, uh, identity file, I, I originally accidentally generated it in the wrong directory, and then I just copied and pasted it into the into the correct directory and apparently that uh, I'm not sure if it's be the way that the RSA key is actually generated that's meant to be in that file location or else it won't work I'm not sure so what I did is I recreated the uh, the identity key in the right directory I went back into codeanywhere.com I added it as an authorized key I saved it I came back in here and I ran a new command uh, with the new identity key and it, and it, it worked. So at this point, I am uh, logged onto my server. Uh, we could see here, so uh, I, it says connected to remote, so I can open folder and here you can select whatever, uh, you know, your, your, you know, for me, it's gonna be my workspace, so where my code is, uh, you can select whatever uh, you want in here. So to open those directories, then what you can also do is uh, open the terminal, so new terminal. <clears throat> and here you can see this is bash directly from the container. So we have uh, successfully connected Microsoft Visual Studio Code to our Code Anywhere container. So I know that uh, I jumped around a lot in there, guys, and uh, hopefully you can follow that. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and just leave them below. And uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day.